immersion in Jamaican popular culture. You see me? <laughs> so, how have we done over the past 25 years? Well, you don't know. Chisel my nizzle. <laughs> Having made those deep and profound opening remarks, it now gives me great pleasure to introduce the chairman of the Broadcasting Commission, Professor Hopeton Yadonno Dunn. <laughs> Professor Dunn. I suppose there's only one Cordell Green in this country. <laughs> Master of Ceremonies, distinguished guests, it is a pleasure to see each of you here this afternoon. I want, on behalf of the Broadcasting Commission, to extend a personal and individual welcome to this 25th anniversary luncheon of the commission, marking an important stage in the development of the commission. I want to welcome all those who are representing various organizations, and I want to extend a special welcome to our guest speaker about whom I'll have something to say a little later. I know that at least a couple former ministers of government were scheduled to be here, but I gather that there is an event that is about to take place or should take place in an hour that may mitigate against their presence and we look forward to the outcome of that event. In that vein, I want to express the appreciation of the Commission to all of the former ministers who have served the Commission or who have overseen the work of the Commission in their uh, respective times. And we have one with us in the person of Mr. Colin Campbell, and I also want to extend warm welcome to him as well. We have the opposition spokesman on information, Sandria Faulkner, and we are also delighted to express our welcome to you. Alongside our distinguished former chairman. Friends, I think it is also appropriate for us to express our, uh, our thanks, even if posthumously, to two former information ministers who made their exit not so long ago. In particular, I think of former information minister Donald Buchanan and former Information Minister Anthony Abrahams. We honor their memory. We are also especially delighted to make our brief greeting and welcome to the licensees present, to the commissioners present, to members of the Secretariat staff, 
to representatives of our sister regulatory agencies and colleagues from the public sector. Now, ladies and gentlemen, long before the notion of youth in national leadership broke so dramatically on the political landscape, the Broadcasting Commission had invited a young man called Andrew to address us on this very special occasion of our 25th anniversary. In so doing, we recognized that entrepreneur Andrew Pearman would bring to our deliberations not only the energy and insight of youth, but also the experience and acumen of someone who has built his own company in good times and difficult times, working in the field that we are a part of, namely information and information systems, and in particular, digital information services. And we have already extended our welcome to him, knowing that our Andrew may not really need the full span of an hour to acquaint us with his thoughtful ideas, and we very much look forward in those circumstances to his fresh insights, his reflections, and his thoughts in particular on our anniversary theme, which is people transitioning digital. This theme reflects the future while centering our people at the heart of the process of transformation. It is the mantra that has guided the work of the Broadcasting Commission as we look to transitioning the entire broadcasting industry to digital technology in less than a decade. It is what informs our own BCJ search for new digital monitoring technologies to enhance the many, indeed the army, of citizen monitors that we have trained and who now help us to ensure that we have acceptable standards of broadcast output in protection of our citizens and in particular in protection of our children. And it is this thinking that has guided the Commission in placing before government a range of reforms, reforms of the broadcasting regulations and reforms of the broadcasting laws, including a broadening of the definition of the term broadcasting. We very much look forward to the enablement of the Commission to pursue even more avidly those who treat our airwaves with scant regard, those who engage in the corrupt practice of payola, and who continue poorly to serve the audiences, either through inadequate technical reach to populations outside of the corporate area, or who operate continually through obsolete equipment and analog mentalities. As we mark this 21st, this 20 first anniversary of the Broadcasting Commission, we also acknowledge the coming of age of our country as it marks 50 years since independence. Just two days ago, we witnessed the swearing in of Jamaica's ninth Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, the first of the post-independence generation. It is significant that the ninth Prime Minister is also the country's fourth Prime Minister in the last six years, and his appointment comes on the eve of the general election year. It would therefore be an understatement to say that we are living in times of rapid and monumental change. Indeed, the country is now catching up, we hope, with what has been the experience of many other countries and sectors in engendering rapid and quantum changes in the communication and political landscapes in preparation for the next 25 
or indeed the next 50 years. This is a time for reflection on how far we have come, even as we acknowledge that we have not maybe come as far as we might have as a nation, and that this opportunity provides us with the space to redouble our energies as we move into the future. So colleagues, this is the background against which we come on this 25th anniversary of the Broadcasting Commission. It's an occasion on which I am proud to say that the Commission is not only well, a well-established, indeed the most well-established, longest-standing content regulator in the Caribbean region, but one that has been a consistent leader in policy reform and in the presentation of new perspectives across Jamaica and indeed in the Caribbean. In concluding, I must acknowledge that the achievements of the Commission in these past 25 years have come as a result of the quality and commitment of successive commissions, the energy and professionalism of our highly competent technical staff in the Secretariat, and on the basis also of the cooperation, assistance and support of all the stakeholders, many of whom are present here in this room. We are delighted that you have joined us this afternoon as the Commission closes one chapter and together we embark on a new journey across what we hope is a new digital and thought frontier for Jamaica and the Commission. Thank you very much. And Andel Foundation Limited. Together, those entities provide communication solutions for many corporate entities, individuals, typical households, and new age-owned offices. In 2010, he formed a new company, Intelligent Multimedia Limited, to focus on the digital out-of-the-home advertising market which is expected to be the next big significant area of growth in the advertising sector. It is particularly significant that the guest speaker is one of only three individuals in the Caribbean to be designated as a Digital Signage Certified Expert, DSCE. And this is but a synopsis of his background. It therefore comes as no surprise that in 2007 he was nominated for the Jamaica Observer Business Leader of the Year Award. Please welcome Mr. Andrew Pearman, CEO of the Anvil Group. making sure I have all my gadgets with me. <clears throat> Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Cordell Green, Chairman of the Jamaica Broadcasting Commission, Professor Dunn, former commissioners, staff of the commission, titans of industry, special guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I would first like to commend the Jamaica Broadcasting Commission on their theme, People Transitioning Digital. We celebrate with you this milestone, and we are appreciative of what you have managed to achieve in 25 years. We recognize as well 
that we have all witnessed a dramatic change in the work, focus, and functioning of your organization over the years and commend you for moving with the times. Give them a round of applause, please. In fact, I just heard that my industry is the next to be regulated, so I'm, I'm actually watching out. <coughs> digitalization, what does it all mean? In fact, the word digitalization is not an authentic word. Maybe it should, and maybe it will soon be. But it, very precisely, it is about the process of converting information into a digital format. More loosely speaking, though, it's about the integration of digital technologies, of dig, digit, digital technologies in everyday life. The digital economy is the global network of economic and social activities that are enabled by information and communication technologies, such as the internet, mobile, and other networks. Why is it important? The digital revolution, and I know we all recognize it as being a full-blown revolution, encompasses, whether we know it or not, or whether we like it or not, all facets of our lives. Digital technology continues to disrupt traditional markets and creates profitable opportunities for firms that are able to recognize them. By participating in the digital economy, we in Jamaica can boost our productivity, global competitiveness, and social well-being. Participating in this digital economy also provides opportunities to increase services, especially in the rural areas, and help deliver better economic, education, health, and social outcomes. The ever-increasing availability of high-speed broadband connections, and I know we have some in the room today to thank, uh, that we need to thank for that, and the establishment of an effective online presence will allow Jamaican businesses to further participate in the global marketplace. The greater use of online opportunities enable businesses not just to be more efficient with their business processes, but to efficiently manage their overall competitiveness, grow revenues, and increase productivity. Of the many areas we could look at in terms of the impact of the digital landscape for us in this room, I would like us to take a look at marketing and communication. And I crave your indulgence over the next five minutes to explore the impact. I would like to look at the business environment in general, the Anvil experience specifically, the Jamaican ICT sector, and the building of literary, literacy skills, and my thoughts on the need to move forward towards a structured national digital strategy. The business environment. Businesses in the 21st century, large and small, take for granted the internet-driven and facilitated global marketplace in which we operate. The bottom line for all entities is that directly and positive messages are emanate from our organizations every day. We must be willing to embrace change. Never before in the history of mankind has especially a small business owner had these cost-effective opportunities made available to them. We have the opportunity to contain costs using digital products. We have the opportunity of expanding our source of, or to obtain goods and services from our suppliers. 
and we have apps and business solutions. For example, the Business Model Toolbox, which is an app that I can bring up now, and I can run through a business scenario, and within 15 minutes, it will give me an indication as to whether or not it makes sense to pursue that initiative. Really, we need to move at the speed of business. Allow me to use my own example. Ann Bell, as you have heard, started way back in 1992, and we were among the, the first mobile dealers to represent TOJ, which was at the time, which, which is now CNW slash Lime. And at that time, we only had analog handsets. Our business fortunes increased significantly when they, decide, when they decided to launch the digital promotion and move from analog to digital in the handsets. That enabled us to increase capacity on the network and allowed more handsets to be connected. That switch meant the world for us and that was when we saw the biggest growth in our company. Then came Digicel and as you could say, the rest is history. After the mobile era, we began to find and look for new ways to leverage this emerging digital landscape. And since then, we ventured into internet and VoIP. And thereafter, the true testament of digitalization came when we launched our two most recent companies. The first, as you heard, was Intelligent Multimedia. And Intelligent Multimedia is about narrow casting as opposed to broadcasting. But somehow we still got under the radar of the Broadcasting Commission. <laughs> and it's about the targeted nature of advertising. We look at geolocation, con customer lifestyle and activities, as well as time of day advertising to reach a new market. AML is built on the premise of out-of-home advertising. And of course, it's all about targeted messages to specific locations at specific times. Now, not for one moment do we pretend that digital signage is replaced in traditional media. So you guys, you don't have to worry. But what we're saying is that they play a different yet complementary role, and it must be combined and coordinated into a single, cohesive, and impactful communication package for your clients. And secondly, and one that I am very passionate and proud of, is the launch of our trade exchange portal. Why? because I believe it has the opportunity to be a true game changer. What we have done is set up a trade community where members leverage their excess capacity and can trade this excess capacity among the other members. Not only does this help businesses by saving cash, but it allows our members to use this digital technology to help themselves not just by way of trade, but by how they conduct the business itself. It has opened the door for new media advertising, social media, content creation, and a host of other digital products and services for which companies can use their excess capacity to, to, to be a part of the digital landscape, rather than the use of hard cash. The members of the exchange also benefit from an online, real-time marketplace and get exposure to the digital trading floor. And again, what we have seen and what we've been able to do over the past couple of years would not have been possible had internet, even though it's not, the penetration is not where we want it to be, but it would not have been possible without the, the work and the investment of companies seated right here. We noticed, however, that one of the challenges we faced 
was finding the requisite skill sets to help us take advantage of the digital opportunities in a marked way. To this end, our Honorable Prime Minister, at the time was the Honorable Minister of Education, maybe still is, has demonstrated his willingness for a public-private partnership with the ICT sector. And I'm proud that they are looking at ways of one, aligning the education needs of the ICT sector with that of the Ministry of Education, and two, and most importantly, effectively coordinating investment and philanthropy in the educational sector. Because far too often, we have a goodwill feel, both here at home and abroad. But when the assistant comes in pockets, and it comes in pretty much unorganized, it's a little difficult to gain maximum use of it. So by putting this all under one body, we can better leverage the resources and make the most of it. And a note on the I ICT scope. People tend to think of the ICT sector as call centers. But re in reality, it's much more. It consists of IT, as well as telecommunications, broadcast media, and all types of audio and video processing and transmission. The term actually is now used to refer to the merging or the convergence of audiovisual and telephone networks with computer networks. The ICT sector is a very dynamic and fast moving digital marketing scenario that is growing, mutating, and self-correcting. In fact, I just returned from uh, an AmCham visit to Washington, and it was surprising to see how many other countries are putting all the resources into this sector. It is a sector that can produce the fastest amount of growth in the shortest possible time. And this brings us to moving towards a national digital strategy. Jamaica's holistic Vision 2030 roadmap is in place. We all hear about it. There is a list of national outcomes in the section, where do we want to be by 2030? On that list, number 11 is a technology-enabled society. As commendable as that is, there is an immediate prerequisite to have this in place now, because this leads to the fulfillment of all the other areas. I hasten to point out that there are several organizations, present company included, that play a role in some aspect of the technology-driven world. But I feel that given the importance and the game-changing nature of the industry, the Prime Minister should consider setting up a unit under his office to spearhead the digital Jamaica vision to keep in mind the following areas. One, the capacity to innovate using digital technologies. Two, building a world-class digital infrastructure. Three, growing the information and communication technology industry. Four, creating Jamaica's digital content advantage, ensuring that we have the legal and regulatory framework for this. Five, building digital skills for tomorrow. And six, research in the digital era. I tend to think of myself as a digital kind of guy. Um, I like my accessories. Um, one of my favorite is the iPad 2. And in fact, when I heard the iPad 2 was coming out, I just said, no problem, I'll just pick up one when I'm traveling next. Of course, I arranged the travel so that it would coincide with the launch date. So I went into the store and they told me, I'm sorry, um, it's not available. You have to either go online, 
and wait four weeks or you can come back in the morning at 6 a.m. and wait. So I looked at him and said, listen, I'm here on a business trip. You must be crazy. You think I'm going to get up here to come here at 6 a.m.? Anyway, I was there at 5.30. <laughs> and you should see the people happy that they have been able to, to, to hold on to, the, to a piece of innovative technology. And I think that is the type of energy, that's the type of enthusiasm, that's the type of feeling that we want for our children. We are living in the age of the Blackberry I am, we're living in the age of the texting. In fact, my three-year-old can use the iPad, um, you know, almost as well as I can. And this is where the technology is going and we need to all be on the same boat. Participation is critical for all stakeholders to ensure that we deepen our understanding of the evolving digital economy, its opportunities, challenges, and impact on society, industry, individuals, and the environment. And I join you all to support my call for a national digital strategy to help us grow and build our nation. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause, please, for the guest speaker, Andrew Pearman. Thank you, Andrew. In commemorating its 25th anniversary, the Broadcasting Commission invited primary school aged children to enter a poster competition themed The Future is Digital. Over 30 entries were submitted and judged by Miss Petrona Morrison, Director of Visual Arts at the Edna Manley College for the Visual and Performing Arts, who is here with us, and Mr. Oswald Mattis, Head of the Visual Arts Department at Edna Manley uh, College. This afternoon, we are pleased to announce the first, second, and third place winners. They will receive trophies. These will be presented by Commissioner Rosemary uh, Vernon. Uh, they will receive trophies and a cash award towards their further education. The teacher who assisted the first place entry will also receive a prize. In third place is a very, very young entrant, nine years old, Alea Gooden. Alea is a grade four student at the New Day Primary and Junior High in Kingston. Her entry was commended by the judges for its strong composition and use of color. Alea receives a trophy and a check for $10,000. Our second place winner is Kamoy Campbell of St. George's Girls School. Kamoy is in grade five. And her entry in the judge's opinion was an interesting integration of image and type, especially in relation to the representation of digital language. Kamoy takes home today a trophy and $15,000 towards her education. Now in Jamaica, around election time, which is this time, Colin start to fret. He's saying I shouldn't be here now. I don't know why no people have me here yeah, eat up food and I'm going share that on the road. Around election time, it is said, 
The person who takes the West takes the rest. We don't know how this will pan out for the imminent elections, but in this race, the West has won. Our first place winner is from Coronal de Primary School in Montego Bay. Ten years old, Nicole Gordon. She's a grade five student whose work is described by the judges as, and I quote, an effective synthesis of the computer as the central image from which a range of ideas extend. The concept highlights the impact of digital media globally and its inclusive nature. There's a strong use of color and type to produce a vibrant visual representation. The colors are clean and fully saturated and show a very good application of media. She was assisted by her teacher, Mr. Dane Julius. Is Mr. Julius here? Please come forward and join her, Mr. Julius. And it's not much, Mr. Julius. You know we are poor public servants, like you. So it's only $10,000. But that's for a good drink. And we salute you, sir, for taking an interest in our young people. Could we give them another round of applause, please? Thank you very much, Mrs. Vernon. Another major activity to mark the 25th anniversary was the high school essay competition. And students between the ages of 12 and 17 were invited to submit essays on the commission's anniversary sub-theme, The Future is Digital. Over 40 entries were received from students across the island. The scripts were evaluated by a team of senior educators and experts in ICTs, led by Chief Judge Dr. Melody Williams, who is here with us today. She's Literacy and Technology Advisor on the USAID Jamaica Basic Education Program. The presentations will be made by Commissioner Elaine Foster Allen. This afternoon, we are pleased to announce that the third place winner is 12-year-old Etienne Mackenzie, who is a grade seven student at Arden High School. Someone is receiving for Etienne. Has to be. Etienne will receive a trophy and a check for $20,000. Could we please give Etienne a round of applause? Thank you so much, Etienne, for entering this competition. You receive a trophy and a check for $20,000. Etienne, put that trophy right on your leg. You will be healed. Our second place winner is Trevon Hamilton of Campion College. Trevon is in 10th grade and wrote in glowing terms of a digital future in which, I quote, the world is a smaller, safer, and easier place to operate in. She takes home a trophy and $30,000. Could we give her another round of applause, please? And our first place winner comes from Jamaica's top secondary school. Campion College has done it again. 16-year-old Khadija Chin, who is a grade set 12 student, cops the prize for first place. Is this Kenya? Is it the schoolwork? Well, I, I tell you what they've said here. They've said that your work was far ahead of the rest of the field. While describing the plethora of conveniences facilitated by the digital age, Kadia was careful to note a potential downside to a technological dependence. The isolated and sedentary lifestyle 
of some members of the fingertip generation. Could we have a round of applause for the winners? Now, in July 2011, students from the island's universities were invited to submit proposals for a $250,000 research grant in commemoration of the Commission's 25th anniversary. This is a one-off grant, and it was created specifically to support research encompassing digital futures and falls within the Broadcasting Commission's research program for this financial year. The recipients of the Broadcasting Commission's 25th Anniversary Research Grant are Ms. Terrian Virtue and Mr. Oliver Hilton, MPhil candidates in Information Technology at the University of Technology, UTech. Oliver, Oliver was part of the 2008 team which represented UTech up to the national semifinals in Microsoft's Image Cup competition. Terrian was valedictorian of UTEC's graduating class of 2009, and in August 2011, was the first runner-up in the Miss Jamaica Festival Queen competition, having earlier copped the 2011 Miss St. Catherine Festival Queen title. Terrian and Andre's research project will be supervised by Dr. Paul Golding, who is here with us today, Senior Lecturer, School of Computing and Information Technology at UTEC. The pair will examine the feasibility of digital switchover in Jamaica from a consumer perspective. And I'll invite Carlene Salmon Johnson, the Assistant Executive Director, to take over proceedings. And you can call us Jack and Jill. We don't mind. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is my privilege this afternoon to take you through the Staff Long Service Awards. Contrary to the name, they won't be very long. The president of the newly, the first president of the newly independent United States of America, George Washington, once said, associate yourself with men of good quality if you esteem your own reputation, for it is better to be alone than to be in bad company. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure this afternoon to recognize eight men and women of excellent quality, whose years of service to the Broadcasting Commission have contributed to the milestone that we celebrate this afternoon. We invite Commissioner Claude Robinson to come forward. He'll be making presentations on behalf of the Commission to our long service awardees. We begin this afternoon with Mrs. Agandi Limi. Agandi, Agandi is the Commission's accounting clerk. She joined the commission in March 2001, and she's well respected by her peers for her quiet and industrious nature. Agandi is a lover of sci-fi movies and country and Western music. And another interesting thing is that her father was an ardent admirer of Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi, after whom Agandi is named. Please give her a round of applause. Our next recipient, I have to say nice things about because he signs my paycheck, is Mr. Cordell Green, our executive director. Now, Cordell really needs no introduction, except to say that he has ably captained the ship at the Broadcasting Commission for the past 10 years. He joined the commission as ED in January 2001. A round of applause, please, for Cordell. Our next recipient is Miss Carol Rufus. Carol is our monitoring and customer service officer, one of two, 
and she's one of two voices you're likely to hear at the commission if you call to make a complaint or a query. She joined the commission in September 2000. An interesting thing about Carol is that she's a fitness enthusiast. She makes every day a 20 minute trek from Halfway Tree to New Kingston in the morning and back again in the evening. And of note, she's usually at work well before 8 a.m. A round of applause for Carol, please. Anthony Johnson. Anthony is the commission's senior technician. He is the second in command in our technical department, which is the area responsible for monitoring and evaluating the technical operations of our licensees. Anthony joined the commission in June 2000. One inter interesting thing about Anthony is that he has excellent eye and hand coordination. Anthony is a member of the Jamaica Darts Association and throws darts competitively. So look out, don't get on his bad side. Julene Anderson. Julene is currently acting as our assistant registrar and so she ensures that our records are secure and accessible. She joined the commission on Valentine's Day in February 4, on February 14, 2000. So we have a sweetheart relationship with Julene. She's a quiet and friendly person and has an excellent sense of humor. Juliet Anderson. Juliet is the commission's finance officer. And in fact, she has been the commission's only finance officer, joining the team in January 2000 when the post was first established at the commission. Juliet is respected for her no-nonsense approach to her work and her responsibilities and she has managed the financial affairs of the Commission with skill and care. Winsome Cousins. Winsome is the other voice you're likely to hear if you call the Commission to make a complaint or a query. Winsome is the other monitoring and customer service officer at the Commission and she joined the staff in July 1999. Now, I don't know if it's something about this department, but she is also, Winsome is also an avid walker. She walks 45 minutes every day from New Kingston to Mannings Hill Road. So that alone deserves a round of applause. Winsome, of course, joined the staff in July 1999. <clears throat> Commissioner Robinson, thank you very much. At this time, we're going to invite our chairman to come forward to make the presentation to the longest serving member of staff. We invite Ms. Claudette Peart to make her way to the podium. Claudette is the commission's senior accountant. And this past June, she celebrated 15 years at the commission, having joined in 1996. Claudette often recalls that when she first joined the commission, she brought the staff compliment up from, a, from two persons to a whopping three persons in 1996. Today, of course, the commission staff stands at 25, so we've come a long way since then, in the past 15 years. The Broadcasting Commission congratulates all our awardees and thanks them for their dedication and commitment. A round of applause please for all our long service awardees. Since, the, since its establishment in 1986, the commission has been served by seven distinguished chairmen. Beginning with our first chairman, the Honorable Glenville H. Owen, Mr. Gordon Wells, the Honorable Eric Francis, Mr. Lloyd A. Vermont, Mr. Dwight Wiley, who served us for only eight months between February 2002 and September 2002 when he passed away whilst in, uh, still in office. Dr. Simon Clark and our own professor, Yodonno Don, who has served since 2006. This afternoon, we're honored to be joined by two of our past chairmen, Mr. Lloyd Vermont and Dr. Simon Clark. We'd like to invite our Executive Director 
our chairman, sorry, chairman, sorry, Professor Dunn, to come forward as we present some tokens of our appreciation to our two past commissioners. We invite Mr. Lloyd Vermont to come forward. Mr. Vermont, of course, served as our chairman between 1996 and 2001. Has Mr. Vermont left? Okay. All right. Well, we, then Dr. Clark. We'll invite Dr. Clark to come forward, please. Dr. Clark, of course, is no stranger to broadcasting and education. He served the commission as chairman between 2002 and 2006. And since I've come to the commission, I've learned that Dr. Clark is an avid sailor. So if any of you would like to take a spin around the harbor in Montego Bay, you have an, a you have an able skipper right here. A round of applause, please, for Dr. Clark. OK, uh, Cordell, will you receive? OK, all right. We now invite Cordell to make the presentation to our commissioners. Our commissioners are appointed to serve five-year terms that are renewable. The current commission's term will come to an end on October 31, 2011. On behalf of a grateful nation, we acknowledge and thank the commissioners for their sterling service in regulating the electronic media sector over these past five years. We invite Mr. Neville James to come forward as we present a token of our appreciation to our commissioners. Mr. James. <laughs> Commissioner James was appointed to the commission in 2008. Okay. We invite Mrs. Hyacinth Lindsay to come forward. Mrs. Lindsay has served the commission since 2007. And as you can see by this, the, the, our screen here, that they also serve active lives in other areas of, of um, society. We invite Dr. Elaine Wallace to come forward. Dr. Wallace has served since 2003. Mr. Claude Robinson. <laughs> Commissioner Robinson currently serves as the chairman of our legislative and policy subcommittee and has served the commission since 2003. 2003. Thank you. A round of applause please for Mr. Robinson. <laughs> Mrs. Elaine Foster Allen. Mrs. Foster Allen is the chair of our Finance and Administration Committee, and she has served the commission since 2003. And of course, on our commission, we are ably served by Canon, the very reverend Canon Peter Mullings. And so we invite Canon to come forward. Canon Mullings, I think Cordell will come to him. Canon Mullings, in June of this year, retired from active ministry to the Anglican Church in Jamaica after serving over 50 years. He was first appointed to the commission in 2001. And now to one of our longest serving commissioners, Mrs. Rosemary Vernon. <laughs> Commissioner Vernon is the chair of our monitoring and compliance committee, and she has served the commission since 1999. Such a pleasure. <laughs> Such a pleasure. You have to give me a kiss. <laughs> A 
And now at this time, I'm going to invite Jack to rejoin Jill on top of the hill. Ladies and gentlemen, the Broadcasting Commission has benefited over the, the, the past five years from exemplary leadership at the level of chairman. Today we salute an extraordinary chairman, Hope Tan Yadonno Dunn, Professor of Communications Policy and Digital Media and Secretary General of the International Association for Media and Communications Research. Professor Dunn has served the commission for 15 years. He was first appointed as commissioner in 1996, reappointed in 2001, and in 2006 he was appointed the seventh chairman of the Broadcasting Commission. I now invite uh, Commissioner Neville James to come forward to make a presentation to Professor Dunn. The great cartoonist Clovis Brown has prepared something very special for the chairman, a keepsake caricature highlighting his contribution to media regulation. I, the audience would like to see it because it's on the screen too. <laughs> Clean air, cable regulation, no daggering, <laughs> and the like. Congratulations, Professor. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Professor, may I ask you to remain on stage, please? We'd like to invite Mr. Lloyd Vermont uh, to come forward now to receive his presentation from the commission um, in appreciation for his past service as chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lloyd Vermont. It, it seems as if heat was a cramp in the leg. So you'll have to borrow the trophy afterwards, please. Are you healed now? Very good. Thank you, Chairman and Chairman Emeritus. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you very much for having joined us today to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the Broadcasting Commission.